share the sentiment, Mr. Fix, but we're stranded at Fort Keeney all the same. Take it easy there. You folks don't need a train. I beg your pardon. That train should have waited out of gratitude and compassion. There's a search party out looking for our friend, Passepartout. He fell from the carriage while bravely fighting off our attackers. Well, most likely he's dead. No! Passepartout is a wily Frenchman. I don't think he's easy to kill, Mr... Merge is the name. Byron J. Merge. Inventor. Mr. Fogg and the soldiers will find him soon. You're an inventor of the patent Byron J. Mudge sailing sledge, which will get you across that snowbound prairie faster than any train. How so? Because she don't have to twist and turn her way to catch all them other stations. <laughs> she can go in a straight line to Omaha. You're very kind, Mr. Mudge. But first, we have to wait for the rescue party. Yes, you do, Mom. Unless they've all been killed, too. Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne Dramatized by Terry James in four episodes. Episode 4, Burning to Get Home. Mr. Fix, I think it's them. Yes, yes, Mr. Fogg and Passepartout, both alive. Just as we predicted, Mr. Mudge. Now you can tell them about my invention. I'm most grateful for your help, uh, Major. And we appreciate the reward money. Have a safer journey this time. Mr. Fogg! As you can see, I've found him. Imagine the scene. There I was, out of bullets, boxing with my fist and my feet. The Indians are closing in with rifles, bows and spears. And then the sight of Monsieur Fogg and the soldiers suddenly makes my captors run far away. I wonder you didn't talk yourself free. Mm. Where is the train? Gone. They refuse to wait. Oh, no. A bunch of ungrateful, heartless b b baboons. But you must meet Mr. Mudge here. I have caused another disaster. Better if I had been shot on the train. What rot. How do you do, Mr. Mudge? I'm mighty fine. He's invented a sledge which is powered by a great sail. My sledge will carry five, and you'll be in Omaha in a few hours. No diversions. You will pilot it for us? Definitely. So as I can bring her back. Her? He means the sledge, not Miss Aouda. Oh, I definitely shan't be coming back. What lies beyond, Omaha? Chicago and New York. Um, will you show us your invention, Mr. Munch? This speed we're going at... What about it? Is it safe? Safer than going slower, son. Look at those dogs. They are being very playful, trying to keep up with us. Are they dogs? No. Wolves. I should have known this would be an insane way to travel. What if we were to hit a tree stump or a rock buried by the snow? We'd most likely be dead before the wolves got to us. So relax, my boy. The Journal of Jean Passepartout. I have written in odd places like the top of an elephant, but Mr. Mudge's sailing sledge is the most exhilarating. The prairie is like a flat white ocean, and as promised, Mr. Mudge is piloting us at great speed in a straight line. Notebook of Sergeant Fix, Detective. Written while hiding, for duty's sake, under a pile of buffalo hides. Why on earth did I introduce fog to Mudge? We are almost certain to perish. Either smashed to pieces or eaten by wild beasts, or else by freezing to death. All in a mad dash to reach New York by the 11th of December. Our steamer by only three quarters of an hour. 
Oh, Mr. Fogg, it is so unfair. There is a French ship over there. It doesn't leave for three days. I could persuade the captain with my cold pistol if necessary. I don't think piracy is the answer. Uh, speaking as a shipping agent, I must agree. But that trading vessel across the dock looks ready to sail. Captain, may we come aboard? Be quick! We put to sea in 60 minutes! Lord above! What are you? Tourists looking around the docks? We are travelers with an urgent need to reach Liverpool. <laughs> you just missed the quickest steamer. We know that. Will you take us, please? I am bound for Bordeaux, not Liverpool. And I don't take passengers. They're nothing but a hindrance. Who are the owners of the Henrietta? I am the owners. There is no way you will be persuaded to carry me and my party. Not if you were to offer me two hundred dollars. I had in mind two thousand. Two thousand apiece? As you say. Eight thousand dollars, all told. Your arithmetic is correct. It's too much, far too much. I fully... I'll take it. Uh, but you're to keep from under my feet, and we still sail in an hour. Uh, we are ready now. Pass me to pay and dismiss the oarsman who brought us over. We must you. And Captain Speedy, if you wish to depart ahead of time, don't let us deter you. Notebook of Sergeant Fix, Detective. For 30 hours we have been heading out into the Atlantic at a terrible a lunatic cost. Fogg seems willfully bent on squandering huge portions of the money he stole. And we're heading for France, not England, so much for his pretense of a wager. He never intended to get back to London 80 days after his departure. Mr. Fix, come and meet the captain. Why should I wish to see the captain? He is odious, stubborn, greedy. He's a great exchange man. Follow me. This is mutiny, nothing less. You criminals will hang. <laughs> What a racket! What's going on? <sighs> Just ignore him, that's only the old captain. Captain Speedy is also owner of the boat. To lock him up is a double crime. And what of the crew? Mr. Fogg has been busy with his money. Bribery! If you like. With stolen funds! Not that again. Mr. Fogg is an honest man. Who disapproves of piracy, huh? Oh, come on, come on! Ah, Mr. Fix, you'll be glad to know we've changed course. I'm not glad that you've stolen Captain Speedy's ship. Stolen? Not at all. We've merely borrowed it for the duration. You can hardly expect me, as a... Shipping agent? Uh, to approve of such a borrowing. Would you prefer, then, to be put adrift in a small boat? Hmm? I simply wish my disapproval to be noted in the ship's log. I don't keep such a thing, but Passepartout can always note it in his journal. Primo Capitaine! And I believe you yourself occasionally make a note or two. <laughs> a shipping agent is bound to. Poor Mr. Fix. It must be a difficult situation for you. And you, miss. But perhaps it will all turn out well in the end. That I very much doubt. Notebook of Sergeant Fix, Detective. From what I know of maritime law, I could arrest Fogg right now, on grounds other than bank robbery. The trouble is, apart from the locked-up Captain Speedy, the whole ship's company is in Fogg's pay. No, to be fair, Miss Oda is bound only by emotional ties. Though what she sees in such a cold fish is beyond me. This afternoon, I had a quiet word with the ship's engineer. Never kept her so long at full speed ahead. Isn't this how you'd have gone to Bordeaux? Ha! Ah, whatever his boss, Captain Speedy was always one for chugging across the ocean. Why, we have a short supply of coal. What's so special about Liverpool, by the way? Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Liverpool! If you think we're heading for Liverpool, you must be mad! We're having the fuel to go farther, man! Why, we've barely enough for that if the storm drives against us any longer! What is happening to our speed? The engineer needs to speak to you, monsieur. That's no good news. Tell me, 
Going at top speed it may be two days to Liverpool, but at top speed we'll run out of coal in the one day. I see. Is coal the only fuel? Aye. It would do as well, except it takes up so much room. Captain Speedy's curses have stirred a response from the heavens above. Mr. Fex, this is merely a problem of physical science. But I must talk to the captain. Fetch him up on deck, Passepartout. Tell him I want a calm discussion. I hope it will come without a fight. I'll go with you to try and keep the peace. I feel sorry for Mr. Fix. He has always wanted to be our friend, but now he has to act like a policeman. He does a fine impersonation of one. Let's hope it impresses Captain Speedy. And Mr. Engineer, sir, return to your post and get us up to top speed. Yes, sir. And when the call runs out... I intend to solve that problem. You'll none of you live to tell the tale. You can hear still a capital crime. Uh, Hold on there. I've spoken in your defense from the start. So why have these pirates let you live, huh? Because we are not pirates. Thieving scum is what you are. Hold your tongue and listen to my final offer. Bah! Once more, I ask to buy your boat. Go to hell! But I'm about to burn what I can of her. Burn the Henrietta? Any part of the superstructure which is combustible. We are two days from Liverpool and nearly out of fuel. Liverpool? Liverpool, Mr. Fix. How dare you think of burning a ship worth $40,000? I hold in my hand $50,000. Will you take it, Captain? What is it? For- Fifty thousand? Mr. Fogg has no right. This is blackmail. Blackmail when I'm giving the man more money than the vessel can possibly be worth? My poor Henrietta. She's been my floating home these twenty years. Considerably more than she is worth. Burn away, sir. Where's my crew? We can all lend a hand. Are all the upper deck stripped? As far as I know. Then we might just make it. Or we might not. I would rather not have the uncertainty. We will have to burn our personal effects as well. This, for instance. What was that, monsieur? Bradshaw's Guide. A fat volume. Not unlike that journal of yours, Passepartout. But, sir... If we fail, you'll have little to write about anyway. Don't expect me to... Not not my notebook. A shipping agent secret, eh? Important details. Information gathered for my employers, as you would expect. I am sure they'll be very understanding. Don't! Give it back! Don't you dare! Please excuse my servant, Mr. Fix. I shall reimburse you, of course. That won't be necessary. What about our carpet bag, monsieur? It has served us well, and I have our remaining funds on my person. Consign it to the flames. The Personal Diary of Awuda. Mr. Fogg has not invited me to join the hectic burning party down in the boiler room. Thus, my diary survives. I had thought to offer it as a sacrifice, but I would not want Mr. Fogg to be embarrassed by catching accidental sight of my most private thoughts. Thoughts about him. I have just been told we are off the coast of Ireland. There is now hardly any deck to stand on, but I must go up and see for myself. Mr. Fogg, your servants spill the beans about this great wager of yours. I admire a gambler, and I'm gonna give you some tough advice. Most kind. For all that's been burned, we shan't reach Liverpool, not at full speed. I see. But there's another way. Those lights over the water mark the port of Queenstown. Queenstown, where there are trains. I know, express trains to Dublin. From where there are fast ferries to Liverpool. Even with a mountain of coal, the Henrietta wouldn't get you to the mainland as quick. Is that really Ireland? It is, and on the sound advice from Captain Speedy, we shall dock there. First, Mr. Fix! 
We're to go ashore at last. But we aren't due in Liverpool until tomorrow. We will land in Ireland first. And travel overland to the Dublin Ferry. I've been told there is very beautiful countryside in Ireland. You'll see it from an express train. <sighs> I expected no more, monsieur. Cheer up, Mr. Fix. You're nearly home. I'll be happier when we reach the mainland. The Personal Diary of Aouda. Mr. Fix has continued to travel with us, both on the train and now here on the ferry boat from Dublin. But all the way he has hardly said a word, and he has looked exceedingly glum. I wonder, is it because he will soon be parted from us? Ah, Liverpool at last! I shall find a cab to take us to the railway station. Uh, one moment. Uh, Mr. Phileas Fogg? Yes? You admit that is your name? Of course. And as a detective, you ought to know it, even without your notebook. Mr. Fix! A detective? Monsieur, he confessed this to me, and I could not take what he said seriously. Mr. Phileas Fogg, I arrest you in the Queen's name. How can you do such a thing? Because he's a complete idiot. Because I have carried this warrant more than halfway around the world. While I easily guessed your trade, your motivation still baffles me completely. I have reason to believe you stole £55,000 from the Bank of England. Ridiculous! If I was the criminal you sought, and guessed you were a policeman, why should I come back to these shores? Regardless of your itinerary, the warrant stands. What on earth can we do, Mr. Fogg? I still have nine and a quarter hours to reach the Reform Club, and the train journey from Liverpool only takes six hours. I offer up two and a half hours for British Justice and Inspector Fix to come to their senses. It's Sergeant Fix, actually. You should not even be a corporal. A constable. But let's not waste time on lesser details. Where am I to be held? In the Custom House for the moment. Mm, very well. Take me there quickly before you go and discover the error you've made. Ah, good afternoon, Mr. Alf. Afternoon, Clancy. Fine day. Glad it is, sir. One to gladden the heart of a club doorman, even in December. I must admit I came from a holiday atmosphere in Threadneedle Street. Ah, Christmas has arrived early, with your bank robber safely under lock and key. Most of the stolen money is safely back in our vaults. Our servants of the Reform Club are relieved, too. Oh, yes. We know we relish a scandal, too. But we never like to think of Mr. Fogg as the guilty party. Most loyal of you, Clancy. We miss him, you see, with his regular ways. I expect you'll see him soon, but not too soon, I hope. <laughs> monsieur, monsieur! M Mr. Fix Mr. Has Fogg, got... sir, I immediately contacted my superiors by telegraph. They regrettably took their time in replying, but uh, how can I begin? Would you have a finish? Sir, but, but, uh, forgive me, it was all down uh, uh, to your unfortunate resemblance to a man who was, ar was arrested in London three days ago. You are free, sir. Free? Free to go. And free to do this? Oh! Yes! Oh! Oh! What a blow! Oh! To damn him with one punch! Monsieur, oh! you must have French blood in you. Yeah, foolish oh! fellow. Where is Miss Iota? Oh! Waiting at the station. Very oh! good. We must oh! hire a special train. Shall we not get out, Mr. Fogg? There is no rush. It is ten minutes to nine on Saturday the 21st of December, 1872. I should have arrived at the Reform Club exactly five minutes ago. But, Monsieur, according to my timepiece, it is only 8.46. You see, Passepartout, even your family heirloom cannot save me. What shall we do? We'll take a cab to number seven, Savile Row. Where I shall quickly turn off my gas fire. That is up to you. But I feel a cold night is about to greet us. The Personal Diary of Aouda. This is a terrible time. Passepartout waited outside his master's door all night. 
He is determined to stop Mr. Fogg killing himself because of financial ruin. Mr. Fogg has asked if I might do without his company until early evening. He says only that he has various business matters to sort out. I can hardly bear to wait. Oh, I apologize for leaving you so much on your own. Passepartout has looked in on me now and then. It must still have been unsettling. Miss Iuda, will you forgive me for bringing you to England? Forgive you? I wish to come. But it turns out I misled you. When we snatched you from danger in your own homeland, I was wealthy. Whether or not your relative in Holland awaited us, I expected to offer financial security, but now I'm ruined. I mind that, not for myself, but because you are very dear to me. Obviously, I shall do all I can to deliver you into your uncle's care, but... I do not wish to be delivered to my uncle. How else can you hope for a decent life? By staying by your side, whatever your level of fortune. You are the most decent man in the whole world. Mr. Fogg, give me your hand. My hand? Your hand, please. Will you have me for your wife? Do you know what you are saying? I'm asking for the second time, will you have me for your wife? You need only answer once. I love you. Yes. By all that's holy, I... I, I love you. I'm entirely yours. <gasps> My dearest Mr. Fogg. There is no time to lose. Of course not. Otherwise you would not be my Mr. Fogg. But what's the hurry this time? You will see. Passport two. Come quickly. Yes, monsieur. What has happened? I wish you to go and make the acquaintance of our parish priest. With pleasure. Ask him if he will perform a wedding ceremony. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Excellent. You don't mind a Monday wedding, do you, my dear? Oh, I insist on it. <laughs> Master. You cannot get married tomorrow. What the devil? I, I won't stand for this. Dear Mr. Fogg, can't you see Passepartout is all smiles? What are you up to? I do not understand it, but I think it must be the most wonderful news, except that the wedding must wait a day. But I've arranged that. Now, calm down and start at the beginning. The vicar refuses to marry anyone on a Sunday. Tomorrow is Sunday. Today is Saturday. Does that mean... Today is Saturday, 21st of December, 1872. Because we travelled constantly in an easterly direction, we gained a day, which means the deadline hasn't passed. Oh, a miracle! Is this why my watch got later and later, monsieur? Yes, I'm fooled, I am. I... I should have remembered this phenomenon last night when you revealed that the heirloom was back to being only four minutes late. My dear, please go to your club straight away. Well, there's plenty of time. We have a new situation to discuss. I'm rich again, thanks to you, my dearest Iuda. In that case, shall we still marry? You have to. It's arranged for the real Monday. Where I do miss Fogg is when we sit at whist. I agree. That cool gentleman could occasionally make his tricks with a sudden fire. Uh, three quarters of a minute, we can relax and actually look forward to his return. <laughs> at what hour on Monday should we present his check at bearings? Oh, whatever you like and shouldn't want to make an unseemly rush about it. A bet is a bet, Ralph. <laughs> Our friend Stuart is a practical soul. In 15 seconds, I shall be content to purr like a kitten. Ten, nine, eight. It cannot possibly be. Oh. 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 
Good evening, gentlemen. I sincerely hope I'm not late. The Personal Diary of Mrs. Phileas Fogg. Monday, 23rd December, 1872. This morning, our wedding took place with Passepartout as best man. The vicar had to persuade him not to turn somersaults until we were outside the church. In addition, my husband cashed checks to the value of 20,000 pounds, but nearly 19,000 was spent on his journey. Since, however, his object was not to win money, but to prove a point, he is going to divide the remaining thousand pounds between Passepartout and the unfortunate ex-Sergeant Fix. This is to show, Fix, that I bear no grudge. I accept in the same spirit, sir. Thank you. You still have a nasty black eye. <laughs> not to worry, miss. I mean, madam. Time and money are great healers. Meanwhile, Passepartout, for the sake of regularity, I've deducted from your share the cost of 1920 hours gas. After all the other expenses are caused, I am grateful, monsieur. Those I happily discount because you saved Mrs. Fogg's life. She is my one true prize in all that has happened. And you are mine, my dear. Mm. <clears throat> monsieur, you realize this came about only because we took the long route through India. Why didn't we save an extra day and go by sea? That, mon ami, is a wonderful mystery. Travelling around the world in 80 days were Leslie Phillips as Phileas Fogg, Diana Quick as Princess Aouda, Eva Bear as Passepartout, and Jim Broadbent as Sergeant Fix. Peter Marinka was Captain Speedy, Terence Edmund, Byron J. Mudge, Mark Straker, the doorman, Jonathan Adams, Mr. Ralph, John Church, Mr. Stewart, and Ronald Herdman, Mr. Flanagan. The music was composed and performed by Wilfredo Acosta, and the director was Janet Whitaker. <laughs>